Hi and welcome to Quilt Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at how you can create comparison sliders for your site using the before after comparison slider widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We are on the page where you can see some examples of how this widget can be used and how it works. The sliders you can make with this widget can be horizontal or vertical. This is how the horizontal works. So the image or images are divided along the horizontal axis. And right below that, we can also see how the vertical slider looks. So here the divider moves along the vertical axis. The before after comparison slider widget includes all kinds of stylization options, so it's sure to be a good fit for any website. Now let's take a look at how you can use this widget and customize it. Head over to the back end. And in the Elementor sidebar, search for Before After. There's our widget. Now drag it over to the right. And this is how a comparison slider looks by default. It has horizontal alignment and room for two images. I'll start by removing the placeholder images. Just click on the little bin icon. And once I've done that, I'll upload my own. That's done by clicking anywhere on this field. And I need to find my before image. This is the one. Insert. Then click again to select the after image. And insert media. There we are. Now, since I can't drag the divider here in the back end to show you how it looks, I have the front end of this post open in another tab so we can check how things look. Refresh for the new element to appear. And there we are. The slider works smoothly and my images look good. Now, let's get back to the settings and see what else we can adjust. Right below the images, we have the handle text option. It says drag by default, and it's the text that appears here on the divider. If you want to change it, just type over the text here. After that, we have the orientation option. So this is what you'd use to switch your slider from a horizontal to a vertical one. And there it is, the same slider, only with vertical orientation. I'll update my work so we can check on it in the front end. Now let's see, refresh. Okay, there it is. And when I drag the divider, everything works smoothly. That's all I wanted to check, so now I can restore this to horizontal orientation. Okay, and update again just in case. Now let's see if my slider is back to the way I want it to be. Okay, perfect. Our next option is default offset. This option lets us adjust the starting position of the divider between our images. By default, it's set to 50%, so it's in the middle. But if you set a different value, let me show you, I'll set something smaller like 45%. And now we can see that the divider's initial position is more to the left. I think this looks good, so I'll leave it that way. Underneath this one, we have a set of options called developer tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcut. Then we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, that's it. Let's move on to the style tab and see what we have in there. The first thing we have is the option to pick the handle top offset. Let me show you what this does. By changing the value, I can change the position of the divider handle. So you can use the slider to adjust yours or type in a new value. I'm going to switch to percentages for mine and set 16 for the value. Okay. Below this, we have the option to adjust the size of the circle that makes our handle. The same principle applies here. You can use the slider or type in a value. Then we have the border size. This lets us adjust the width of our divider line, like so. I'm happy with the default width, so I'll leave it be. After this, we have the text color option. This applies to our handle text, and you can change it easily to whatever color you like. And then there's the handle text typography. With these options, we can pick the font family for our text. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. You can also pick the font size here. I'll leave mine set to default. Then we have the weight option where we can pick any of these values to set the font weight. I'll leave mine on default. Then we have the text transform option where we can pick how the text will look. It's capitalized by default, but you can change that to any of the others. And there's the style option where we can change our text to italic, for example. Following that, the decoration option lets us add lines over, under, or through our text. 
Then the line height, which is hard to show as I only have one word of text, but you can use it to get a bit more space around your text if you have more of it. Finally, the letter spacing option lets us create more space between letters. Okay, that's it for the typography options. Below this, we have the handle color. With it, we can change the color of the divider and the handle circle and make them match image colors or the side palette, whatever you like. And that's it for our settings. The last options tab, Advanced, has several useful settings for positioning, responsiveness, entrance animations, and more, but since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our before after comparison slider widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. Alright, one more thing before we finish up. I want to show you how to change this element from in grid to full width. The steps are pretty simple, but a few things to keep in mind. We're all likely working with different themes, so how these settings work for you might differ. What I'm using is the key theme, made by our very own team here at Code Interactive. The entire key theme and all 100 of its demos are created using the key add-ons plugin, and both the theme and the plugin have been designed to complement each other perfectly. Additionally, we made sure the key theme is compatible with Elementor's full width page template. You should keep in mind that the same might not be true for your theme as depending on the one you're using, the full width template might be rendered differently. In my case, using the key theme, in order to change the section with the gallery to full width, I need to go to settings here. These are the page settings. Then under page layout, I'm going to make sure Elementor full width is selected. So this is like a precondition. I need a full width page layout to be able to stretch my content if I want to. And I also have the key full width layout as an option, but that's limited to the key theme. So I'm sticking with Elementor's as it's the one you should all have access to. Now, a template won't automatically switch the page content from in grid to full width. For that to happen, you need to change the settings for the section. Click here on this middle icon to open the section settings. Then here under Content Width, and this is the Layout tab, mind you, you need to switch the settings from Box to Full Width. And there we go. My section is now stretched across the full width of the page. Also, as a tip, uh, let me put this back the way it was. If you're not happy with your section's width, you can adjust it here. By dragging this slider, you can adjust the width of this section all the way up to Full Width. Or you can type in a pixel width you want to use here. Up to you. But this option gives you another way to adjust the width of your content. Ok, now I'll save my work and we can take a look at how it's turned out on the front. Refresh. And there it is. It looks good, the divider is sliding smoothly, everything is there. So now you've seen all the options this widget has, you should know how to make any of the examples from the widgets page. Now all you need to do is pick which orientation you prefer and start making sliders for your WordPress website. Ultimately, I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making comparison sliders can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its before-after comparison slider widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!